you've all got some um, brilliant one-on-one scenes with Amelda Staunton in um, in this season. She's got a really tough challenge, sort of following on from Claire Foy and Olivia Coleman, and she's also playing, I guess, the version of the Queen that we all remember, the most recent version of the Queen. Um, what was she like to work with? What were those scenes like like to do for you three? So difficult. She, she she is amazing. She is so professional, and she has such calm and and dignity because she's a hilarious person. Mm-hmm. And you know she stars in our top musicals. You know, and there is this darling girl in her fat suit. <laughs> you know, being so dignified, it, it's glorious. And we're and we're uh, you know we're we're playing her family, so it's that uh, you know in rehearsals with Imelda, you know, because we're all actors and a lot of us have done lots of you know theater and that's our that's our you know we're just turns aren't we, <laughs> we you know you, you want to imbue it with so much emotion and we've all discussed with Imelda many times it's bringing it back this is yeah. we're playing a family with a different emotional mm. uh landscape a very different way of being with each other so but yeah she's just she, she's you know she makes it very easy and and fun yeah you know she has got such a a wit and charm and impish quality, if I can use that phrase. Um, that, and she's such a she's at the top of a game. That to be, to be in the ring with her as an actor, it's such a joy mm, and yeah. a privilege. Perhaps I have more to reflect on than most. Did did your view of the royal family change from working on the show and, and watching the series? I was always a staunch royalist, really over the top one. I used to cry if the Queen came out in a car from Buckingham Palace. So, you know, there was nowhere for me to go. <laughs> I think just by virtue of all the research material that is afforded to you, you sort of learn a lot about the royal family that you never knew. Mm. And then the more you know about them and what they go through and what the day to day is for them, the more admiration and respect, whether you're monarchist Absolutely. or not, you mm. just think, as human beings, what they have to give and their sense of duty and mm. what they sacrifice is unparalleled. Mm. This is not a five day a week job. This mm. is lifelong. Yes. Mm. And, uh, you know, our job's always to defend our characters. You can't play a character as an actor if you judge them. So, you you know, you're looking for their motivations and, and you know, you're, 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 that's your job to, to play those and understand those and empathise. We've, you know, I think all actors have an excess of empathy. So mm. that's, you know, that's what you're putting to play here. It feels it's all about to erupt. She opens her mouth and hand grenades come out. She wants to tear down the temple. Let's go for it. What the hell is she doing? Um, James, despite the fact it makes me, makes me feel a bit nauseous, I do need to ask about Toegate and um, that, <laughs> that, that scene with Andrew and the, Andrew and the Queen. Um, yes. it's, it's brilliantly awkward and uh, it's lovely to see uh, Amelda. Did you struggle to get through that scene as you were talking about it? <laughs> uh, only struggled in as much as, you know, trying not to corpse because it's so well written and because Peter had built in that shorthand between the Queen and her alleged favourite Andrew, certainly at that time. Um, <laughs> you know, that was there underneath it. So, yeah, we struggled, but in in the best sense of the word, it was it was great fun to play, yeah. Um, Claudia, both you and uh, Erin Doherty both bring a real feistiness and sassiness <laughs> to Princess. To the princess, out of all the royals, she feels like the one who sort of won't complain, and she's a bit of a go-getter. Did oh, you yeah. did you feel that way about her? Oh, she's extraordinary. I mean, the research, you know, when you when you look, I've got this book, a biography written about her, and it, it shows her schedule over um, a few weeks, and she's flying in from Somalia, coming back uh, twenty four hours later, going to a livery dinner, and then her four hundred engagements a year, mm. three hundred charities. 36 sporting and university chancellorships and livery companies, and they all say she took an active role. Two children, a working farm, um, a recent divorce, uh, dogs, mm. chickens. You know, <laughs> it is a full, full life, and this woman does not have time. This, this, she's handling admin, and you know, as a as a working mum myself, that was my that was my way into her. You remain loyal to this family. Who is silent? Yes, it's a system. 
For better or for worse, we're all stuck in it. And the Queen Mum in, in this series, it feels like she is the kind of the last one refusing to budge, move with the times, the kind of representative of the past. Is that the way you kind of saw her? There's this story about her, because we, we know nothing about these people really, however many books we, we read, but she was late for lunch at Buckingham Palace, from which is walking from Clarence House, which isn't that far away. But the traffic was gridlocked. So the, the, she said, we'll walk, and the security men held their heads. Mm -hmm. And they came to a zebra crossing, and the security man said, I have to press the button now, ma'am. She said, well, why is that? He said, when I press the button, the traffic stops and it tells us to walk across. She said, well, isn't that ingenious? <laughs> See, she never, she'd never seen one before. <laughs> totally protected. How did it come to this? 